Hey there, my name is uh, James Bent. I'm VP of Solution Engineering here at Virtuoso. And I'm just going to do a quick short presentation on how to do API and UI testing with Virtuoso. So firstly, what is Virtuoso? So Virtuoso, we're a collaborative, intelligent robotic test automation platform. So really focusing on speeding testing for both engineers and non-engineers with self-maintaining automation in the cloud. And we can be used to automate predominantly UI, UX, functional integration, visual compatibility and regression testing for browser-based applications, whether enterprise or custom web or mobile browser applications. So we're low-code autonomous testing with robotic automation driven by machine learning and self-healing. Fantastic. What does that actually mean and how does that really apply? Well, a great place to start is by thinking of the testing pyramid. So the pyramid, of course, consists of UI tests at the top of the pyramid, integration tests in the middle, and unit tests at the bottom. And remember, the, the testing pyramid is kind of an ideal state. And the different sizes, the segments, represent how much testing should occur at each layer. So lots of testing at the unit tests, slightly less at the integration, and the fewest at the UI test level. And it also shows us the sequence and hierarchy that those typically happen. Unit testing first, then integration tests, followed by UI tests. Now, why is it, though, that the ideal view is that, let's say, we do the fewest tests at the UI level? Well, that predominantly comes into two factors. One, if we think about unit testing, because they're small, granular tests, they're typically very quick to do, and therefore the cost of them per test is low. UI tests are typically, they take longer to do. They're more involved, and therefore the cost per test is higher. So it's not to say that in the perfect world, we wouldn't do lots of UI testing. It's just that because of speed and cost considerations, then less typically occurs at the UI level. Now, where does Virtuoso really sit within this view? Well, we are focused predominantly on UI, functional UI testing. However, for us, we're kind of saying Virtuoso actually is UI testing, so actual tests that interact with the user interface, but then bringing in the API layer to that. So UI testing with API, which means we're actually edging down the pyramid to combine both UI testing and integration tests. And the way that this works is that with UI and API testing, you can be doing assertions with validations, cross-checking both the front end with API tests, using different environments, optimizing for different permutations and combinations. So you can have different data being fed in through APIs and within the UI. You can have cross-functional tests with API permutations and combinations. And at all times, you're getting defect triggering, so measuring and reporting on issues. But particularly because you can bring in APIs, what you also then can start doing is horizontal end-to-end -end testing, whether that's across modules within, let's say, a CRM system. So testing both within the accounts module of a CRM and the opportunity module, or whether you're going between different applications themselves, which are connected via integrations. So it could be a CRM system passing confirmed orders via an integration to an ERP system to then have the order processed. So let's just define with Virtuoso functionality is tested to show that with given inputs, certain outcomes are validated. That's really what we're talking about with functional UI testing. That's the aim. Now, what that opens up is the means to say that you can combine functional steps completed in the UI with or completely replaced by data inputted via integrations via APIs, including connecting to databases, which can then show an outcome is achieved. All of which ensures you can really leverage the most efficient and cost-effective completion of functional UI testing. And as a, an example, just before we actually jump in and look at the platform quickly, take Salesforce. So let's assume that the test case is to update an existing opportunity status. And you want to ensure the UI is working through a full user's journey. So actually, you want the user to do everything in the UI. Now, in that case, even though the requirement doesn't actually say you need to create an opportunity because of the maintenance of test data, but also the validation of creating an existing opportunity, you could use uh, natural language steps in Virtuoso to author the UI-based steps 
to actually enter the data into the UI. So clicking to create a new opportunity, writing data into a field to create the opportunity. You're typically looking at 20 minutes to author that test, which comparing to other coded means is actually is pretty fantastic to be able to write that automated test in 20 minutes. Bearing in mind also in Virtuoso, you can create reusable segments. So take the login steps. I can write them once, save them into a library, and then just drop those steps back in. So the first time I write the test in all the steps, it takes 20 minutes. The second time, if I'm simply composing from those reusable segments, I'm gonna write that test in about 30 seconds. Now that test will cover 90 steps for all of those different points if we're doing it in the UI. And that takes about three minutes, 30 seconds to run. And bear in mind as well, within Salesforce, like other browser-based applications, there are lots of dynamic changes happening every time I run that automation. So I've got IDs changing, I've got XFAS being updated. With Virtuoso, we have automated self-healing driven by machine learning, which reduces that maintenance time for this test to zero. You don't have to maintain the test every time it runs. So those are really good outputs. However, if we consider as well, I could run the same test, but this time I can say, actually, if I can combine uh, UI plus API, so extend the scope and scale of testing to test multiple scenarios at speed with the API layer, instead of going in to that test and creating the opportunity in the UI, so literally filling the opportunity fields in the UI, I can do that via an API call. I can pass in the opportunity details via an API call because this test only requires me to update an op existing opportunity status. So it's still highly likely I wanna create that opportunity and the associated account because managing test data and changing environments is typically very hard, but it means I can do this very efficiently. So what we see is I do the data set up via the API and then I'm only doing the UI steps which actually relate to the test case. And what we see there is it might take slightly longer because you've got to, to initially author this because you've got to set up all your API calls, the token call, the create account call, the create opportunity call. To compose it again though, so for instance, if I want to make a token call, I set that up once, save that sequence of steps to create the token with via the API into a library. Again, to compose that test, it's about 30 seconds. In this test, we've gone from 90 steps from doing it in the UI to 40 steps where we're combining UI and API. That's 55% more efficient. And to run that test, because it's a lot quicker, literally we're making within less than a second, we're able to create the opportunity via the API versus a minute through all the steps when we're doing it in the UI. It's much quicker to run it as well. So 50 seconds in this case to run it, which is 76% more efficient. And again, even for those steps that are in the UI, where we've got those dynamic changes, you've got that zero maintenance because of the machine learning driven self-healing. So both cases are still very good results. It's just, you can see how you can gain further efficiency from combining those different stages on the testing pyramid, the UI testing with integration by combining UI and API to gain further efficiency, but also then you can really scale this up to feed in lots of different data scenarios through the API, through things like test data. So let's take a quick look at what that actually looks like in practice. So this is Virtuoso that we're looking at now. We've gone in and we've gone into our testing goal, which is the sales module of Salesforce. Now bear in mind, we're looking at Salesforce, but we cover any browser-based application. We're not just a Salesforce solution. So what I've got then, I've got two different journeys, two test cases. One is changing the status of the opportunity with the UI and API. The other one's in the UI only. So let's look at the UI only first. And what we see is that in Virtuoso, we're a natural language programming tool. It means I can write test steps in natural language syntax based on what I see on the screen. So if I see a username field, I can write my value in the username. And note here, we can parameterize the data and then drive that whether it's from environment data. So I could set up to have my Salesforce environment with all my different variables respective to the environment. Or I could also have test data sets, which in, for instance, here I've got account and opportunity data scenarios that I'm going to feed in to my tests. So coming back in, we can see that we can create, we've got our login steps, we've got our sales module, we're going to create an account. And again, we're doing all of this 
by writing natural language steps to go ahead and interact with purely the user interface through these natural language steps. And so we're creating an account, we're then creating an opportunity on all of these steps, we're automatically capturing before and after screenshots. So that's great for your uh, uh, test reporting. And we're able to see through that we can create and actually then in this case, this is the main uh, step we're using, which is rel relative to the test case to take the opportunity we've created and change the status, as well as asserting that we get an expected status, which is the sales stage to move. And then at the end of our test, we're going in and through the UI, we're then deleting the opportunity and deleting the account to do data cleanup. So that's test is still, it's, it's very good. And we have got these reusable segments, which means for instance, if I wanna come in, create my login steps and write those, then I can save them into a library. So you can see I've made this purple so that when I come into my next journey, and let's say this could be my journey two, if I know that I've already got my test steps authored, then I can go into the library, look for the login steps, add them in, and it adds those steps in and then runs them through. So we're playing these with live authoring so I can see them and get validation on every step as it runs. Now I could add to those, so we are natural language based. So again, I could come in and say, now I want to, I don't know, uh, create uh, or manage setup, for example. So literally when we talk about authoring a natural language, we say, click, I look on screen and see set up home. So I could say set up home. And then when we press enter, then Virtuoso runs that step, interacts with, in this case, the setup home. So by clicking on that, so if we see it's gone ahead and clicked on that link. Now, what we're then doing is the way we identify these objects is we do this intelligently as the test is running so that we are looking at the DOM level using bots to discover all the available selectors at the time of that test running. So we're building that model of that element. And that feeds into what we call self-healing. So machine learning driven self-healing. So what we're then doing is, is every time the tests are running, for every single step, we are looking at the previous working model collected, then using machine learning algorithms to look through and say, so long as we can identify with confidence that the element is the same, then we automatically replace with the updated selectors, where this could be XPass updating, IDs, class names, it could even be labels, which are changing. So you're basically able to author natural language tests with, could be you know, UI-based functional steps, and not have to maintain those steps because of dynamic changes that are occurring. But that said, if we then talk about what does that look like when we go to the functional UI using the UI and the API layer. Now, what this enables us to do is say that we can still come in and we still log into the platform using our login steps, which we've reused those. We didn't have to reauthor them. We just dropped those in from the library. We're coming to the sales module, which again, I've just dropped in based on those steps already having been written and put into the library. We're closing all tabs, which is just you know, good practice in Salesforce to close them down. So we're, we've got a, a fresh view within Salesforce. But then what we're doing is coming in and we're generating our token from an API call. We're then using that token to create an account via an API and then also create an opportunity. So all of these data setup steps are now occurring through the API. We're inputting data through the API. Now to do that in Virtuoso, we have an API manager, which we use for creating our API calls. So we can see for our token call, I can pass in in the header, my URL, my client secret, client ID and code, which are from variables. And then obviously here I'm making my post call with the respective authorization. And then I'm mapping the output. And doing the same thing for my create account, create opportunity. I've got all the data being mapped in. Now that data, those variables can come again from the test data. So here's my variables that I'm going to pass into my API calls, which means that I can run the same calls with different data scenarios. But also then in my environment, that's where I'm holding things like my endpoint, my URL, my client ID, my password, my secret all of which can be entered securely and redacted. So those are secure details I don't want people to be able to view. So that when I come in, I could make the calls, let's say for the token, which returns the token for me into the response. And then I take that token and I can pass that in 
to all my subsequent calls. So I'm authorizing on the fly using the token, passing in the variable, various inputs to that API call to create the account, which again can come from a uh, test data tables uh, or from things like environment details. So that then when I run this, I'm greatly reducing down the steps I'm having to do purely in the UI to make this more efficient, but also scalable. So that where the purpose of this test is just to change the status, I can create the account and the opportunity via the API. Then the only steps I'm doing in the UI are to go and in this case, go and search for that opportunity, which was generated via the API call, and then go and transition the status of that. And then at the end of the test, I'm going to make two further calls, which should delete the opportunity and account equally through the APIs that are available to do my data cleanup at the end of the test. So, and again, the nice thing here is all of these, while I have to do the initial setup uh, within the API module of my different API calls, once those are set up, I can create these reusable segments. So for instance, these are my delete steps. I've put those into the library. So for instance, if I want to make a token call, I can just add that in. And I've now added my API token call in. So I don't need to know how to set up the API. I just need to know that really for here, with the environment already configured, which has all the necessary settings for the URLs, client IDs, usernames, and passwords for authorizing, the only thing I've got to do is really think about my test data. So maintaining test data, which I could be uploading from a CSV file with all the different variables and the scenarios, that's really all I've got to consider to say, actually, how will I scale out my testing to ensure that, let's say, I can create opportunities in certain statuses and then put the expected status to be able to assert against. So for instance, here, where we're asserting for the opportunity stage, I'm doing that from the test data scenario as well. And when it comes to running these, I can just execute them and choose to do it with test data. And when I do that, what we see is we can then run that scenario. So for instance, here, I've got five different journeys all running through the API, but I'm running it with five different test data scenarios. And then I'm reporting on each of those independently. So you've got this very scalable, efficient means to do UI and API testing, even though it's perfectly fine and valid to do everything in the UI as well. That should still be a part of the testing. It's just enabling, if we come back to the testing pyramid, it's just enabling us to ensure that we're not sort of just at the very tip of the UI testing. We're actually starting to go deeper into UI tests and then edging into the integration tests to create that efficiency which naturally increases the speed while reducing the cost down as if compared to where if we were just testing at the very top of the pyramid, just purely doing only UI based tests. That's a good view of how you can really leverage Virtuoso in relation to the testing pyramid for functional UI testing within your browser based applications. And if you do want to learn more, of course, you can come to the website virtuoso.qa. There's a lot of good information and resource here, but also you can do things like get yourself a free trial or book a demo. And we can talk to you specifically about certain scenarios and solutions, respective of functional UI end to end testing, inclusive of. UI testing with natural language plus the API testing in relation to that.